We now move on to the next story where a group initially against the Muslim Muslim ticket is now singing a different tune. Now, the All Progressives Congress National Stakeholders Forum had called on the party's leadership to narrow the search for its 2023 vice presidential candidate to a northern Christian as this would ensure national inclusion and help to manage differences and promote national unity. Now, almost a month later, the same group now says in order to build an effective working society, capacity, competence and character must be prioritized over religion and ethnicity. The Sishatima will add value to Tinubu's presidency. But why this sudden change of mind? Well, I have joining me now Liu Audo, who is the convener of the APC National Stakeholders, uh, Stakeholders uh, Forum. Uh, so good to have you join us. <laughs> so what happened just a month after and uh, we have you singing a different tune i mean when you, you, you it's okay to have um, a position on issues but it's also very important to be very logical about it so when you see or you come across um, a superior you know argument logically i mean it's only natural to you know change your position based on new information available to you i mean that's and was the new information available which is basically the fact that we have given um our trust you know um in the confi we have given our trust and confidence in the leadership of ashiwaji bolami Tinubu. and um he has said what we wanted was for all of these options to be looked at he has looked at it and he has come back to say i mean you heard his speech you know he clearly stated we cannot keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. At that point, okay, we understand the fact that, okay, if we are to prioritize competence, capacity, character, content, you know, we, we, if we are to grow, we can't sacrifice these forces, you know, just to suit religious, um, um, what's it called, I identity. Basically, the fact is, um, either way, our very reason for saying what we said at the beginning was to de-emphasize the relevance of religion. Prior to now, we're, we've been used to the Christian coming from the south and the Muslim coming from the north. The moment Ashwaju emerged, it was the reverse. So what we want was, you know, um, we felt in our own that reversing that, you know, we on its own de-emphasize religion. You know, we on its own de-emphasize de religion. Um, what has happened has done the same thing equally because it means that um, from the top, you know, the leader is taking the bull by the horn saying we can't keep running a society where ethnicity, religion, you know, gender, all of this uh, hold us back either individually or collectively. It hasn't worked because, I mean, in reality, whatever it is we, we, we set out to achieve by having a religiously balanced, you know, ticket hasn't really worked. The, 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 what's it called, hostility between religion and all, all of that. So maybe we should change direction. Okay, and uh, change of direction uh, comes with certain consequences. Some of the minority groups in your party, uh, the Christian groups in your party are already, uh, I mean, voicing out their concerns. Those in the north that are minorities, who are also Christians are saying that, look, it looks like they are being relegated. Aren't their concerns genuine? It is genuine. You know, and, um, and the good thing about it is that I sure you understand the sensitivity of that, and he gave due attention to it. And at the same time, he's come back. When we give a leader a responsibility to lead us in a certain direction, you know, it's... it's, it's it's only important, it's only good enough for us to hear him out and allow him put on the table what his plans are and what he feels he needs to achieve those things that we want. Sometimes we have to make decisions that are not very suitable on the f surface, you know, because we need to move forward. You know, Shetima isn't really a majority, he's a Kanuri man. Kanuri is a majority in the north. He's neither full and nor house. So at the end of the day, you know, by the time you narrow it down, there is always going to be one majority or ma one minority at some point. So that is why those should not even matter at this point. Okay. So if you were Tinubu now, what, what sort of uh, uh, 
uh, firefighting measure will you be putting in place right now to quench this fire in the APC? Because, I mean, you could see a senior party leader like Babachi Lawal talking, some of your party leaders and members, former governorship candidates, in one way or the other, are resigning from the party. Some are stepping down from responsibilities but still remaining in the party. So what do we do so that he has a close-knit structure that helps him to win the election. That's if he's able to battle the likes of Atiku, Peter Obi, and Kwan Kwan Su, and all of that. You know, um, over the years, the fact that he has remained on top of his game is his ability to manage crisis as a leader. And um, he's not one who shy away from responsibility. You know, you, like we rightly said in our day, I mean, this was no way an easy decision. You know, but he knows what needs to be. I mean, we all know in our national life, there are a couple of decisions that we we want to be able to make, but certain sentiments hold us back. He knows what, he, I mean, he's, he's so progressive that whatever has to be done, that needs to be done, will be done. So in this case, I don't think it's just up to him. We, you know, as stakeholders in the party, we've started consulting. We are calling on the different sector, trying to explain, you know, the ticket. We need, first and first as a party, then as a people, as a country, to look at the ticket beyond religion, identity. You know, I, I, I would say this, that in the southern part of Nigeria, the longest um, consistent performance we've had from state management has been in Lagos. From 1990 to date, they've been able to build, I mean, there's been continuity. They've, they've been able to build on that. When you come to, this, to the north, of the 19th state of the north, from, 2000, from 1990 to date, the, the, the most effective 12 years we've had has been in Boronu, Shetima's eight years and four years of Zulu going so far. I mean, so we are clearly saying that based on the previous assignment given to all of the governors we've had from 1990, the, the two people who have done so well during their eight years and have understood the need to ensure that there's continuity, that you need to take responsibility for how your achievement will be either managed or will be you know, um, eroded. You know, so that they use their inf influence in ensuring that whoever emerges that will take over the mantle of leadership from them is someone who shares their vision, is someone who is going to build on. Shetima ensured that with Zulum. Ashwaju ensured that with Babatunde Rajifashola in Lagos. So basically, we are presenting the two best leaders in terms of those that have tested in the two regions. Let's understand the fact that the country itself wasn't an amalgamation of two religions. It was of two regions, the northern and the southern. And in our ticket so far, we have been able to stay fair to both regions. You know, not giving ticket to a northerner after our own northern president. We've taken, I mean, we pushed for it. We are at the forefront of it. We pushed for it, for the ticket to go to the south. And our leaders did the right thing by pushing it to the south. So we have done that balance of, that is even more important than the religious balance. Because, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, we have two exceptional leaders. I mean, our position, by the time he came to Shetima, you look at his CV, whatever measure, whatever standard, whatever parameter you want to measure leaders by, when you look at it and look at every other person, we had a list of people who felt were equally competent. Yeah, but by the time we rank them based on, you know, including the religion and all of those things. the ability to deliver votes. <laughs> it's not even about, I have said it and my team has said it time and time again. Ashwaju was going to win that election. He was always going to win that election, respective of his running mate. That was the primary election. No, the general election. Okay. Yeah, we are, you know, <laughs> Muslim, Muslim ticket we were going to win. Muslim, however, Ashwaju will always win that ticket. That was certain. But this is about, I mean, as a leader, he has looked into the future. He's not as interested in the election, in winning the election as he is in terms of governance. He uh, wants uh, someone uh, who uh, will okay. with Just him. before we go, because uh, we don't have enough time left, um, have you been reading the social media? Because some of your, those in the opposition parties are already thanking their stars that Chinobu did this uh, Muslim Muslim ticket thing because they say it's a mistake. And we heard it was, uh, 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 it's a trouble by one of your chieftains here for Tinubu. Now, if you look at what people are already writing and saying, and they're like, I mean, this is the perfect excuse to sweep APC away from power. What do you say to those kind of thinkings? Then let's meet at the polls. <laughs> It's, it, I mean, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not um, as much as um, we crave for difference, we crave for improvement in leadership. You know, I'm, I'm very pragmatic. 
I don't delude myself or attempt to delude us. I mean, when you're bringing someone, I want to look at the person you're bringing and I want to look at the institution that, 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 that he's coming with. That's behind the person. That's behind the person. I haven't seen anybody, I haven't seen anybody, any candidate or any set of candidates that come 50% close to what we have on our candidate. <laughs> and I Not even an Atiku Abubakar. Or oh, even Peter Obi, I mean, I was, was actually I referring what, what, to some what, what, of what, what, the, those in the Obedient movement who are really celebrating and saying that, look, it looks like uh, with this decision, it will be easier for APC to be defeated. I'll tell you something. I've had the Quickly, opportunity of engaging with, the, with some of those people you've talked about. I'll tell you 80% of them don't even know they are candidate. It will shock you that I spoke with about my contemporaries and they didn't even know when Obi was governor. They can't even point to things he has done. It's not about emotion. It's about fact. So you think this is a winning ticket? It is. Okay. The APC is the winning party. The ticket is the winning ticket. <laughs> it's, it's uh, all right. Uh, it's left for it's Nigerians simple. to actually judge uh, on election day. And uh, we must thank you so much, uh, Aliu Audu, uh, convener, APC National Stakeholders, for joining us to explain to us your change of decision. And we can only wish you well and hope to have you some other time here. Yeah. Well, that's how it's been for this edition of the Arise interview. Do join us again uh, some other time from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching. I'm Soma Samuel.